Hi everyone. Today we are going to take a look at Pabli, an application integration software that offers a range of powerful tools to help you scale and grow your business. With Pabli, you can access business critical applications like form creation, email marketing, billing, and automation all in one place. You don't need to have technical skills to use it. So let us talk about the applications which are available in Pabli. Click the link, you will be landing to this page and here you can click here on sign up. So you'll be able to see all these applications which are available. Pabli Connect, Pabli Subscription, and then Pabli Email Marketing, Pabli Form Builder, Pabli Email Verification. These are the five different applications. Pabli Connect will help you to connect applications and send data from one application to another application. This is the application integration software. So I'll click on Access Now. You can see here it's connect.pabli.com. So right now you can see on dashboard, on dashboard you'll be able to see the tasks. Uh, so in free account, total 100 tasks are available per month. And right now you can see here I have consumed 36 free tasks and these are all the integrations that I created and these integrations are called workflow based on the trigger and action. So in settings you will see task summary here and this will show you how many tasks you have consumed and how many tasks are available and then in connections you can see here that I have connected with chat GPT and chat GPT API is already connected so one is in use. So this particular WhatsApp is having two workflows associated with this. You can edit this here or otherwise if you want to delete, you can delete this from here as well. So these I'll be disconnecting because I'm not using these. And then if you see here team members, so in case you want to add more team members, so they must be using uh, Pabli and you will be able to invite them. And if you want to share the workflows, if you're working as a team and you want to share the workflow so that all of the team members can edit it, we'll go into API and webhooks if you have already created any API so you'll be able to see it here so you can generate the API token from here and then you'll be able to use this particular API token to connect from external applications so in case you want to create the webhook so, so you can have up to five uh, webhook URLs time zone you can define your time zone so I have already chosen my time zone here I'll go to dashboard and I'll show you how we can create the workflow once you click on create workflow you have to give of course a name it will be in workflow basically you will have a trigger and an action trigger will be based on an event and that event will lead to an action so this trigger can come from any external application suppose if somebody is sending you a whatsapp message and uh, you are receiving that message so that becomes a trigger and based on that trigger you can create an action so similarly, if there is an update from external application, that event becomes a trigger and based on that event, you can create an action. Action can also be same application or external application. So uh, trigger can also come from external application or trigger can be even locally also created. So what could be trigger? Trigger could be your schedule. Trigger could be your any email that you receive. Trigger could be any message that you receive. You know, for example, if I uh, use a trigger called schedule and suppose if I want to run a specific code or if you if i want to send an email on regular intervals so i can define the interval here so for example days of the week those days would be suppose every sunday and every monday i want to send a specific i want to run a specific event so it is suppose 9 pm once this schedule will arrive like every monday and every sunday by 9 pm so what should happen so that is an action if you are using IFTTT, so if it means that IFTTT is if this then that. So it is same like based on trigger, there is an action. So similarly here also, if this time occurs, then this happens. So what is that this? So in this, I can use anything like I can send an SMS. It will be a reminder or I can uh, send an email. So I can do that email. I can send a WhatsApp message. If I choose WhatsApp, for example, so I can use WhatsApp API if you are using business WhatsApp and what it will do, it will send a message. So what should be the message? It will choose, of course, my WhatsApp number here and here I'll save it. And to which number it will send, I'll suppose type a number to which number this message has to go. This is scheduled 
time event. Now, of course, this is an example that I'm showing you. It could be anything. So once I send this test message, this message will go to this particular number and this will be the message. So when it will automatically occur, it will occur on this particular date. Now here you can define, of course, any schedule and that on this particular schedule, what should be the action? So first trigger is trigger and then it will be action. So there could be multiple actions that first this action should take place. Then this action should take place. Then based on this, another action should take place. So suppose if I give you an example of what is the trigger and what is the action. And in your company, if there is a delivery which has been scheduled from your ERP system, once the delivery order is updated, that is a trigger. Based on that trigger, what will be action? So action could be that you are informing a courier company or you are informing a shipping agent that there is a shipment ready for departure. Another message can go to, another action can be that you have to inform the uh, customer that your delivery has been scheduled and you will soon get the delivery. We might be updating an external application where we update the application saying that the delivery ha order has been scheduled. So if you are using multiple systems, they are like you have the, an ERP, a warehouse management system separately. So from here, the delivery order will uh, come and from here, uh, warehouse management system. In this particular action, if I'm sending a message, so I can use SMS here. These are all the gateways which are available. So you are here, you are sending a WhatsApp message to a customer saying that your delivery is ready. And third is that you are through API, you are connecting to the external application. You are posting it. And based on this particular event, you might also schedule a delivery and you can you might update a calendar event saying that on this particular date, there is a delivery. So you can use the calendar event. If you see here, there is a Google calendar. So you can update the Google calendar for this. And what will be the action event? So you will choose create an event. And then once you connect it, so it will create an event based on uh, this particular delivery schedule. And those delivery schedules will be available with drivers or uh, available with the logistics company or available with your uh, supply chain uh, team. So this way you can have the first workflow that will be available on your Pabli account. If I go here to workflows and here is the list of workflows which will be available. So if you want to see the list of workflows and if you want to delete them, so you can simply go here to workflows and select all spores and action and then you can delete the workflows here. So I created all these test workflows. So I'll be just uh, accept this particular one. Maybe I'll delete all these workflows. So delete workflows. Yes, delete. And then so all of these workflows are now available in trash. And if I go here, you can quickly access the other applications. Right now, I am in connect.pabli.com. So here also you can see these. This is my home page of the Pabli. Here I'm with connect. And if you want to access other applications, suppose I'll just show you the form builder. I'll create my first form here. For example, this will be an inquiry form. So here you can, uh, by default, it will uh, choose this first name, last name, and all of that. And then in case you want to add a drop down here, so I can add a drop down here also and name it. So now this is the uh, form that has been created and you can of course share this form and share this form. You can share a URL also. You can share it as a, you can embed this into your website also and you can embed the full form also. Here you can see it will be on the sidebar uh, and this will be running a JavaScript in fact and that JavaScript can be copied into your website. If you want to embed the full form into your website, you can do that also. Or if you want to create a pop-up form, which will appear as a subscription or something like that. So you can use that. So this is similar to email marketing platforms, which are offering this. I have submitted the inquiry here in the form and here the inquiry has come. But if I do here integration, now you can see here that the integration is not available in the free account. Uh, so which means that I cannot uh, do the integration with external system. If it is paid here, so what you can do, you can of course create uh, the entries depending upon what the inquiry has come. If it is the sales inquiry, you can create a webhook and through webhook, you can send the data to uh, external application and uh, you can create an automatic lead. You can create an automatic support request. You can auto create an automatic complaint. And here, in, if you go into settings of that form, you can just edit here, you can change it, you can add your new logo, you can add a complete message here, thank you message. And then conditional redirect, now suppose uh, if 
your condition is uh, if for example if i say here that what is your inquiry about if this is the inquiry if it is equal to and equal to is sales inquiry so what should it do so if i do display a custom message so instead of the thank you page normal thank you page you can have your custom submission here email notification also you can choose where the, your email notification should go your own smtp server so you can use your own smtp server so this was all about pably form this is very simple and easy to create there are some templates also available so you can go here to all these templates so depending upon what kind of data you want to collect so you can do that also if you are using subscription and billing system the subscription billing system is also possible from here pably email marketing uh, and pably email verification you can uh, use this particular tool it will help you to verify all your email accounts so if you have for example a csv file of all the email accounts so you'll upload them and it will do the email verification for you so you can buy the uh, subscription by the credits here if you see here uh, for 1000 emails it is five dollars for example if you have 50000 50000 50, emails so it will take 80 dollars and it will verify all the emails so from this particular tool you can do the email verification here is the email marketing so you can set up it now your information is stored here and then you can create an email so if you see here your profile is uh, completed so create an email and then add delivery server and subscribers so for free account you will have 100 subscribers send unlimited emails to 100 subscribers uh, if i see the comparison of pably with zapier zapier was having great search i'm using both of the systems because uh, in Pab pably there are some features which are missing and in zapier there are also some uh, features missing zapier is not user friendly as of now but pably is user friendly i'll just give you one example so if i talk about creating a schedule so i'll choose the schedule here if i choose uh, days of week so here it gives me easily that which days i want to choose so i can choose it here and then time i can easily make the uh, change the time and uh, date and days of course so but here if i go into zapier and if i create a new zap here and if I trigger it based on schedule, so schedule here is called schedule by Zapier. And here, if you choose the every day, now it doesn't show every day, is it a day or a week? So I'll continue here. And here it shows me trigger on which days. So I'll choose the custom. So for custom, I need to type here. I cannot choose from the list, for example, Tuesday and Thursday. Now I'm not sure if the if this format is correct or not. So it has not shown me anything. It has not given me error, any error. So if I choose, for example, this, so it will not show me whether this is correct or this is wrong. So here also, if I go into custom, so custom, and here I can choose 8:15 p.m. So now I am not sure if this particular trigger is correct because it shows me it's fine, but here is it recognized correctly or it is not recognized correctly so this seems that zapier still needs to work a lot so it shows your trigger is working days of week i don't know this is not correct if i talk about a webhook so if i go here a webhook and here if my trigger is a webhook so i'll choose a webhook as a trigger and then of course it will create the url and i can use this url suppose here i'm using name is equal to amjad it will send the data and name is equal to amjad this is coming here here if i use the trigger which will be webhook so you can see webhook by zapier this is for premium members only i'll be using for example catch webhook now continue so here if i copy i'm pasting the url here to send the request we found a request so this particular uh, webhook worked i have provided a detailed comparison between pably and zapier so that it will help you to decide that which application you should go for both of the systems are great if you want to know more about it give me the comments in the comment section below see you in next video take care and goodbye